The discussion about the Commonwealth agenda cannot go unnoticed while referring to the historical background of governance in Uganda. 10th October, a day after the independence of Uganda, the Majesty's government donated the parliamentary building to the people of Uganda. The ceremony was officiated by the Dutch of Kent accompanied by the Duchess of Kent. The Commonwealth doctrine derives its strength on peace, democracy and governance, which are shared by the 54 countries. On her second visit to Uganda, the late Queen Elizabeth II visited Uganda Parliament in 2007 during a precast of Chogam which was held in Kampala. This ring-fenced tree at the Parliament Green Gardens planted by the late Queen Elizabeth is among the remarkable features to live with. As the tree goes and blossom, grows and blossoms, even when the person who planted it will no longer be there, it will be a commemoration of her visit to Uganda, to the Parliament of Uganda, but also it will be reassuring about the historical umbilical linkage between us as a country, between our democracy, our parliament, and the, and the democracy in the United Kingdom. Under the stewardship of former Vice President Edward Sikandi, the late Queen Elizabeth II addressed the Eighth Parliament. This was also the time Uganda had adopted the multi-party system after a referendum in 2005. The late UK Queen commended Uganda for its efforts to extend a peacekeeping mission in Somalia, describing the move as a professionalism of Uganda's armed forces. Queen Elizabeth also noted the support Uganda government undertook to promote peace in northern Uganda. The Director Information and Publicity at NRM, Emmanuel Dombo, and the Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Barrio Monsi, were part of the 8th Parliament at the time Queen Elizabeth visited Uganda and recount what transpired in Parliament. And it was an exciting moment and we were very glad to receive her. I remember her as a very elegant and smartly dressed queen and uh, who was passionate about humanity. Queen Elizabeth is best known for presenting a short communication but with a diversity of content worth attracting attention in the promotion of good governance. But also that elevates her office and dignity as a person. So, to us in the country, we are very privileged to host uh, her when she came. The Commonwealth system prevails in the Parliament of Uganda despite being slightly different from the House of Commons. Our source of training materials and induction to members of Parliament is usually the House of Commons or related legislatures which have a similar system from which we could benchmark. Dr. Chris Bariomosi says Uganda needs to promote its own independent homegrown good governance practices and avoid being slaves to the colonial system. We should be able to pick lessons and practices over this period and uh, even if it means dismantling the Commonwealth and the colonial legacy systems, we should and have our own way of looking at things. Bayamunsi asserts that despite the achievements obtained through foreign policies, Uganda is mature enough to drive its own system. We should not continue being slaves of the Commonwealth system. We have matured enough as countries which were colonized, and therefore we should also be able to examine some of these systems we, which were left and where they are not appropriate or they are not practical. Queen Elizabeth's 70-year accomplished leadership of the United Kingdom is also a food for thought for cultural leaders in Africa. Has managed to balance between the two and succeed as a nation. It is something that we can look at 
and find out whether there are any things that we can learn from in order to be replicated. Although unlike Uganda, we don't have one superior or singular traditional institution that encompasses the entire country. The late Queen Elizabeth first had a stopover at Entebbe International Airport in 1952 and then returned shortly after 1954 for the inauguration of the Owen Falls Dam and most recently in 2007 for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting that was held in Kampala. Daniel Mugoya, Dan Lugemwa, UBC News.